Thank you very much for coming and welcome to the Inside Out Lecture Series. The mission of the Inside Out Lecture Series <coughs> is to bring the best minds of our generation from all over the globe to come and inspire their work, the staff and students doing the School of Art, Architecture and Design. Uh, to this end, we've flown in some brilliant artists from all over the globe and we're particularly proud of our partnership with Yorkshire Sculpture International that have afforded us to bring some of the top sculptors in the world to come and speak to you. Um, we're privileged to have, today to have Nabuku Tushaya and Sarah Brown, the principal keeper from Leeds Art Gallery, will be in conversation um, here today. But to introduce them formally is the director of the Henry Moore Foundation, Godfrey Worsdale. Godfrey Worsdale, please welcome. Thank you very much, Simon, and um, great to see you all here this afternoon. Just to uh, say a little bit about um, the Yorkshire Sculpture International project, for those of you, of you who don't know, uh, this is a project of a collaboration between four galleries concerned very specifically with, with sculpture. The uh, Art Gallery here in Leeds and its phenomenal <coughs> uh, collections of sculpture, the Henry Moore Institute, which is a part of the the Henry Moore Foundation and is very much leading the way in the UK as a centre for the study of sculpture, the wonderful Yorkshire Sculpture Park and, and the Hepworth Wakefield. And it really is, if you stop to think for a moment, that the, the likelihood of having such fabulous institutions in such a, a small geographical area makes it globally significant. And one of the, uh, the outcomes of that, uh, as a collaborative team, we, we thought we are globally significant, we should really exploit that and we're all very well connected internationally with we work with artists from all over the globe the idea of bringing this together in one festival seemed a sensible thing to do and and so Yorkshire Sculpture International is the result of those conversations um, on the subject of conversations this one is one that I'm really uh, for personal reasons very very excited to be able to introduce um, um, both Nabucco and Sarah two really wonderful people Sarah has I think in the time she's been in charge of, of, of the art gallery in Leeds, has really moved it into a different place. It, it's so much more vibrant. The programme is very uh, engaging. It varied, it moves around. It's, it's, it's thoroughly engaged and, and it's great to see. And it's one of the country's most important um, institutions and, and it's wonderful to have Sarah leading it. And Nabucco also is a very special person to me. And I, if you'll forgive me a very small anecdote, um, many years ago, um, when I was a bit more of a, a bit less of a bureaucrat and a bit more of a jobbing curator and writer, um, and I was very engaged with with um, contemporary art, and particularly interested in the work of young artists. And I was uh, privileged to be invited to be an external examiner at Goldsmiths College in London. And uh, this sounded like a great thing to be given the opportunity to do. However, I quickly realised it's, it's, it's a pretty daunting prospect. Um, and the, the way this sort of this challenge arose was that you'd enter a space where the, the student's work was presented, um, spend a bit of time in that space on your own, and then shortly after the student would join you for the Viva Voce where you'd talk through the work and, and learn more about the artist, and then eventually you'd feed back to the to the college, but of course, whilst this is a kind of challenge for the, the examiner, it's an incredibly daunting thing for the students, and their, their futures, their careers may, may hinge on this very short experience with most often times a stranger. Um, so I always felt very nervous, and my worst fear was to walk into the student space and see the work and be a bit deflated by it, and then have to think, how do I now engage with this this young artist in a way that can be constructive <laughs> and productive. But anyway, I moved into this particular space, which was um, uh, introduced to me as, as the work of Nabucco. And the uh, tutor on the course left me, and I started to look at this work, and I was absolutely blown away by this work. It was incredibly sensitive, challenging, humorous, Use of materials that really belied the age of, of the artist who'd made it. And I became increasingly excited to meet the person who'd created this <laughs> stunning work. And it remains, to this day, the very high, highest high point of my time as an external examiner. And I think we might even be lucky to see some of the, the very early work that, that I saw on that day. So, roll forward several years, 
um, to now be working with my colleagues on York Sculpture International and to have Nabucco as a participant and now a very well recognised and significant artist on the international stage is fantastic for me and I'm, I'm thrilled that that first meeting um, now brings us to this point. Um, I'm going to clear off the stage and, and let Sarah and Nabucco have a, have a conversation and we'll see some images to support that. But I'd like you all to join me in welcoming our two speakers. Thank you. Thank you very much for that introduction, Simon and Godfrey. Um, I'm delighted to be here with Nabucco. It's fantastic to have the opportunity to have a conversation with you, and I'd like to thank Yorkshire Sculpture International for flying you over for this conversation and for three days in Leeds. Um, I think our conversation is going to be informal. We're going to speak for about 30, 40 minutes, and then there'll be an opportunity for questions from everyone here. And the Buka, I wanted to start by, I mean, Godfrey's given you that fantastic introduction about your work in Goldsmiths, and I too had the opportunity to see your work um, in Japan. This should go, this should be at the end. I don't know if yeah. it's just going to carry on rolling through. Ah, okay. Keep looping the whole way. Just ah, keep looping okay. through. So <clears throat> perhaps while this is looping itself through, we'll just go back, this is the end, let's go yes. back right to the beginning. Mm -hmm. When you've described to me your, um, when you were very young, your process of making <clears throat> and some of the creative and destructive elements yeah. of, of uh, making objects yeah. from a very early age. Yeah. And I was just wondering if you could talk about, you were born in Yakamoto, which is a small town outside Tokyo. Yeah. Your parents were yeah, teachers. Yeah. But got a little bit problem with uh, communicating with my parents. It was really hard, a little bit too, too hard. So I got probably psychological problem that I couldn't go to schools, primary schools. So I always in, uh, in my room and uh, I really couldn't have any friends. So I was making my friend with a domestic object. And fortunately, my mother was, fortunately, unfortunately, I don't know, strange feminist in Japan, which was unusual. And she was quite hysterical about doing housewife stuff. So she was really happy that I break the kitchen domestic object. So I was, you know, uh, break that kind of bowl and chopping, chopping board to make strange things. And I made name, each name, and I was play with them. So that is actually fundamentally the same stuff I'm doing now. <laughs> it's okay. And, yeah, yeah, no, that's brilliant. I think that's a really, I think for me, that's a really sort of um, important way in to, to your work. And I think also the other part of that was what you did with those, with those objects yeah. once you had reconfigured those broken components that were mm -hmm. often domestic yeah. appliances. Mm -hmm. And so what did you, what did you with do, do with them in ah, terms of... Okay. So it's completely have a problem with talking with my, especially with father. So I made my friend and put uh, the, the, his desk in his office. And uh, I was looking at my father, father's behavior with my work uh, through the hole of the door. That was my communication with my father. Yeah, my father treats the work always, not the work, like a strange stuff, always nicely. So then I was keeping myself, I think. And would he, crops. you describe, would he, would he keep the objects that you made just and put, uh, put, uh, shelf put them on a the shelf. Yeah. And yeah, you yeah, embarrassing to no, talk about it. No, but I think it. that's. I, I, know, but I, I really want to. I really want to thank you for that. For that incredibly <laughs> yeah. not yeah. easy, but very yeah. generous yeah. Um, sharing. Because in the time that we've spoken about mm -hmm. your work mm -hmm. and the different projects that you've done, mm -hmm. I think that that story and that sort of those beginnings yeah. are okay. very important and we kind of come back to them. Yeah. And I, th I also then wanted to sort of say that you, 
you grew up, you did go to school. Yeah. But you um, you made the decision mm -hmm. when you were about 20 to mm. study mm -hmm. in Florence. Yeah, yeah. Over 20, but yeah. And so you you didn't go to study sculpture? No, I went to uh, a painting course in Florence. And uh, it was quite boring for me because of the, in Italy there's a system in Florence, it's specialized about the rena Renaissance that uh, I couldn't get on with. <laughs> so I nearly didn't go to school, but I got visa, which mm -hmm. is important. And I was traveling all the time and I was so excited. And you really wanted to, that desire to leave Japan. Yeah, you just, really, uh, you really, really had that. Yeah, I really wanted through your way, completely through your way. At the time, I wasn't believed like now to live in Japan. I thought I've never back to Japan. Mm. At the time. Yeah. So we'll come back to that. But then, mm. from your time studying painting yeah. in Florence, you described going to the Venice Biennale. Yes, it was wonderful. And excited, and I didn't know anything about art before. Art, I mean, I mean art. Contemporary <laughs> right? art. Contemporary, Contemporary art. art. Yeah, or what I think about art, or never. <laughs> so I, I never forget, and still remember that my. <laughs> I didn't understand anything about what they're doing, what they're, but just the energy. And felt like a full of mad people living strongly in the world and so excited. I, I, I didn't talk about it. I shouted in the, the Kana Kana, mm -hmm. Me too, I come here, and shouted. My friend said, oh God, no, God. <laughs> <laughs> so you had that very, I mean, you say you had that very strong desire to be in, be in, be, be in the Venice Biennale. I didn't know that mean being an artist. Just want to be joined like them. Yeah. And was it this? I mean, you talked about particular work that had an impact on you, Nam June Pak, that you saw there. But this, um, this kind of explosion of contemporary work in the context of an incredibly historic city. Yeah. What, what was it? The art? Was it? Was it? Was it's it just, just that sort of excitement? Oh. Because that led to you then yeah. going to go, deciding to go to Goldsmiths. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I was, I was actually getting a lot of stuff in Florence. I mean, uh, because of a big difference from Japan. Mm. Uh, thinking way and the lifestyle and uh, value about, what they think about the value of the life, and especially women's. Human, mm -hmm. not human, uh, women. Women, women okay. thinking way. Mm -hmm. So I just thought I'm okay in Florence. And then next stage, that's what I do for my life. Then I really wanted, you know, I researched and studied how to be in the mainstream <laughs> artist. And then discovered I have to be an artist, right? Kind of stuff. <laughs> then I decided which country, okay, then decided London. Yeah. And so you settled on London, you came to Goldsmiths, and you yeah. began making work that um, Probably I know had a huge impact on Godfrey, but was quite unlike anything. I mean, there's an element of um, that, I was, I was going to ask you, could you talk about maybe that, that element of the combination of the pre-configured existing objects with what you then began to make yourself. So create, casting or creating in particularly silicon. Mm -hmm. Could you talk about that early work? So you, you arrived in London, it was the early 2000s. Yeah. Um, London was an incredible sort of energy. Uh, you yeah, the 2000s in London was completely amazing period that uh, you know, right? Mm -hmm. It was a huge, huge energy to be, to find new stuff, new idea, new, <laughs> not only art, every, for everything, I think. And uh, to be international, it was huge energy and changing, changing and developing every day. That mm. And it was really that moment when <clears throat> the 90s had happened and mm. Tate had opened and, and, and yeah. London in that decade had completely changed. And, uh, also Euro stuff is in a part, right? It was so beautiful, amazing. 
And you had, I mean, a, a kind of uh, a moment that I think was incredibly enviable to many artists. So, enviable artists. Well, sort of, you know, was very um, admirable. And what, you know. Well, you were so, you were so lucky. English. I know. Nubika, I think no, you're doing fine. I, I, I lived 10 years in, in UK, but uh, I've never studied English, so. But you speak very <laughs> well. You speak very well. Busy to make work. And you can, you can pull me up on words that yeah. I use. Um, yeah. So... You you graduated from Goldsmiths? No, actually, not graduate. But you fin but you finished the period of one, studying Goldsmiths. One, one year, finished. one year. Yes, yes. And then you were at the Royal Academy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you, um, in two thousand and three. I mean, you can talk a bit about the Goldsmiths' work. Uh, this is a degree show. Work. Yeah. So this is your degree show. Yeah. This is actually the first work that I feel. I've done something I like. Mm -hmm. uh, how, or how uh, I did, how I am, as mm -hmm. well, kind of. And that creation, that combination of, the, uh, I'm quite interested in that process of destruction and creation mm -hmm. that you do. Could you talk a bit about that in this work, that process of taking things apart, reconfiguring them, Adding, made. Uh, but, yeah, but the degree shows work is I had only three weeks. So I picked up everything from the workshop, school workshop, which people threw it away and cut and put in together or something. It was just simple. Like, you know, you can see the cleaning for the ear or cotton, and uh, that one is uh, brushes, mm -hmm. brushes, and put it something. It's, it's, it's nice. Mars. 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 This is Mars. The Martian is there. Yeah. <laughs> so this, so, and I'm, in, and I'm interested in this kind of, you know, there's this, there's this tabletop yeah. that, a pit that kind of does recur yeah. in your work. Yeah. And, um, I mean, echoes that, that kind of, that relationship that you had to placing objects on your, on the desk of your oh, yeah, father that, yeah. and, yeah. and yeah. the, the kind of, yeah. Um, do you want to keep? Can you press? Yeah. Can you keep going, Jane? Maybe I should use. You can see here yeah. on the screen. Mm. Do you want to talk a bit more about yeah, this? It's about fine, this. Fine. And then these yes. are the the works mm. that you often gave names to, individual names. Sorry, what are you the, thinking the, about here? <laughs> the um, the when you talked about creating these objects that you named. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the the title, you mean? Title. I I actually use the material and the title, uh, but the title language is a kind of for me is a one of the material, like same as cotton or metal, the same. So I assemble, you see, put it together, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes put it together and cut it, cut it and put it, change. Those stuff is together. Uh, the the vocabulary is together cut it so how can I say so you do you do the same, same you treat same, language same, in the same yes, way because yes. you have these fantastic titles yeah because um, we do the same way and you treat language in the same way that you cut and edit yeah. materials and yeah. you've described materials as um, like magnets yeah oh yes 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 I, I, I really fit for me the sentence that um, the materials are like a magnet. So if I use the mag uh, no magnet, uh, materials, sometimes uh, materials take something inside myself, take out, sometimes childhood memory, sometimes you know memory of yesterday, feeling of yesterday, or sometimes imagine to go to the moon whenever they do to me, not I do. So that's, my work is actually a layer of those process. Yeah. Now I like just touching or playing with, mater with materials without aim to anything. Mm, that, yeah. And you described being a kind of, um almost like a conductor, the process of conducting an orchestra 
after oh, two materials. Yes, yes. Yeah, when I, when I go into finish, yes. 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 And could you talk a bit about that process of going from chaos? I and, mean. Well, when you talk about your, so the, the process of how you um, control that kind of chaos of, of conducting an orchestra or yeah, your studio to sort of distilling. Yeah, control, not control. I don't know. Actually, if I think really honestly myself, I control, but not control. Because each material has a kind of strong identity. So, for example, when I use cotton, cotton has a strong identity. Like, I cannot make shape, for example. Mm. And uh, I cannot make a uh, feeling with metal, for example, right? So I have to say yes, always yes, about how they are. But if only I say yes all the time, it doesn't come up as a work. Mm. So do something. <laughs> and we talked about when you work with a material like silicon. Yeah. And being a, a sculptor who's, a, who's a, that, that tussle or that being a slave to the material. Yeah. It's, it's, mm, some materials have a really strong kind of character, but uh, not always say yes about how they are. But that point, how much I say yes, how much? No. The point is uh, really important. And then if I change the point too much or not too much, it doesn't work. Mm. And then, then I can say that point is what uh, my work, it's like identity of my work. That is a way that show my work, I mean, Nobukotsuchiya's work, I think. Mm. If I look at other people's work, it's more, generally, more control. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And I just, we're, we're just on the work, <coughs> because after your, after your time at Goldsmiths and the Royal Academy, mm -hmm. and you were picked up by Anthony Reynolds, mm -hmm. so you, who you've been with to mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. and you then were selected to show in the 50th Biennale by Francesca Bonami, and this mm -hmm. is some of the work yeah. that you showed. So, I mean, it's incredible that within yeah, yeah, a decade yeah. Yeah, of yeah. that experience of being yeah. in Florence and seeing yeah. that yes. happened, I wondered if you could just talk a bit about the work that you selected, but also for so many of the audience here who are students and Student. who that, that uh, kind who, of... Who are, um, who are students? <laughs> student. Ah, uh, okay, the art course student art course, fine art, and sculpture, or multimedia, right, okay, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you enjoy, you enjoy your course? Right. I had a difficult, difficulty always, I went for schools, <laughs> university and all of them not I don't have any document to degree or something I always had a little bit problem with schools I love to be student but yeah and what did you <laughs> love I mean was it the first was it be, being 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 a student or having having studio with other students mm. I really liked it but yeah. and what was that experience like being in in the Venice Biennale at that stage with it, with these, and it was three yeah, works. I was, I was so happy and excited, and I was <laughs> working. But at at the same time, I didn't know myself. I was so nervous as well because I didn't have experience for any of my show mm. except the degree show. So I realized after the Venice, I got uh, losing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's completely. Nothing here was mm. so I discovered I was nervous. At the time, I didn't know myself. Just <laughs> kind of and it was a, an incredible meet. I mean, you know, you were described as one of the twelve up-and-coming artists. There was an incredible mm -hmm. um, pressure 
Yes, yeah. Patricia, yeah. On that yeah, kind of in, international that. acclaim at, yeah. at quite an early... Yeah, I think so. And they also install, the day of install, that was 40 degrees. So it was horrible. Were things <laughs> melting? I know there were artists with work melting that year, one year when it was incredibly hot. Mm, um, yeah. And yeah, it was, it was nice, yeah. Yeah. And so you then um, went back to Japan. Yep. And you showed, I mean, this is where I first saw your work um, mm. in at, Japan. In yes, Japan. Yes, yes. It was and amazing at the bathhouse mm. and um, I was just going to say I mean I was there initially on a research fellowship mm. looking at the Mona Ho ha School of Art which mm. is literally Japanese kind of Arte Povera school of things and you're mainly from artists from the 60s mm. um, mainly male artists mm -hmm. and when I show you, saw your show at the bathhouse I just was completely mm -hmm drawn in mm -hmm. um, and I wondered if we could talk about the so its title was 30 ways to go to the moon yeah it's nice <laughs> nice no <laughs> we, we, we can have uh, 30 ways to go to the moon and shall we is this go yeah go to the bathhouse mm. work and we can just talk a bit about um, so the, the show was a collection of this sculptures one. yeah this one yeah there was uh, how many works? About one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven works in the in the space. Yeah. And it was, I mean, the bathhouse is a converted bathhouse. It's in a very particular area of Tokyo that's mm. very unusual yeah. <coughs> in that it's. Um, yeah, or the originally it was a uh, public bus, but the inside they remade, remade to the gallery. It's nice space, kind of. Yes. And, then. and just talking about the, the installation, I mean, what's in, I'm interested in the relationship between the individual works and the line mm -hmm. that you use in the gallery. Mm -hmm. Could you maybe right. talk a bit about that? The, the way that you create individual works, but also an exhibition, that process yeah, of... Yeah, but for me, it's uh, not individual work. Uh, that's uh, one installation, because it's connected, in my head, it's connected, kind of story, not story. Also, my story in my head is also fragments. Language is cut it, language and uh, images also cut it uh, in my head, pff, huge mess. And then to organize the, in my, the mess, it's just a bit one work, one work, kind of. So it looks like individual work, but actually not. It's really so they're connected. So, they're really connected. Mm, so sometimes, uh, or quite often use tube to you know, suggest a connection. Kind of. And you nice. Yeah, yeah, no, and I wonder whether you, want, you could talk a bit about um, the title. I mean, there is this element of, of something that looks incredibly sort of futuristic, otherworldly. Yeah, I like the futuristic stuff to escape how am I. Yeah, to... No, it's, it's nice now, imagine to go to the moon. I don't know if I go there, reality. We can go to the... Mars, not Mars, Saturn, Mars, Mars, mm -hmm. right? I didn't apply the project. You, you know? didn't do that, you didn't do I the didn't application for that. Yeah, I was, did, did you apply? No. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I was thinking, but I didn't apply, because I have to do training, right? <laughs> and do you, but there's also an element in that futuristic mm -hmm. element, but there's also mm -hmm. one that is what the works are made of, which are mm. the sort of detritus, the waste mm. Mm -mm. that you use and reconfigure, mm -mm. and it's kind yeah. of um, like old stuff, past stuff. How do you go, how do you sort of go about the process of? It's, it's really, really important to pick up really old stuff and take off the kind of history or break the history that they have to change to. 
something probably is changing my imagination, I think, together mm -hmm. to go to not directly for the future in somewhere kind of. So my desire is to really go to somewhere, nowhere, somewhere, but no future, no past, no somewhere. <laughs> kind mm -hmm. of. Really, I somewhere in the future, but brings the past with you. No, 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 no not that direction. Or could be here, or could be here, or could be here. Could be everywhere, right? Just uh, we, just we don't know. We talk on the future and the past, like mm. lying. It's not like that. I, mm. I don't mm. know. I guess. No, no. I th yeah, I think that's a really interesting. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, also, I wanted to talk to you about the 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 pro your your very kindly the the um the process of making. So the project mm. that you recently did in Mexico. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's it. So yeah, this. That's it. So uh, this. This is uh, probably we are going to show my process, right? Yeah. This is uh, like uh, I got the space in the residency, and the that really village in uh, Mexico is nothing there, just a cold beach and a beach, and the beach, and the people are dancing and with music only, or cocaine, kind of stuff. So they don't have, of course, any material, the material shop. So I used in the middle, that was a candle, for example. And in front, it's uh, like a fiber stuff is... Uh, uh, Packing for bananas. Bananas, bananas. Yeah, and uh, fortunately only wire was there. And then... Other stuff is from the tree or nature, natural stuff, plants, dried plants. So I started to play with. This is one day, two days, comes mess like children. And then I, you know, start could be, could be not, could be, you know, with this and the combination I think. And they go to next, next images. So I pick up those stuff. Ah, I'm sure that I can make one work small work to bring, to put in the back, to go back, right? And then next one, and it comes like that. So among, uh, among the mess, I made the end one, next one also, this one as well. This is a, from the, from the road, pick up the kind of The bits rubbish. of the car, yes. the bits of the, yes. the cut off ends. And then bottom one is a rail for the door. So I made, Actually, I just next one as well. Ah, and then that the white one is cactus. Do you know cactus? Which is uh, some hair. So I pick up and oh, charming cactus. Ah, kind of stuff, right? So I made quite a lot from that mess. That is my process. Show, to show my process is really easy to compact. And from this chaos yeah, yeah. comes a kind of... Yeah, so if it's a big exhibition, I do huge mess my studio. So sometimes when I back to the studio, I feel vomit because it's tiring. Not only that, because with my imagination also, that's so tiring stuff that sometimes really fed up myself. But only the end to you know, assemble, join them, get balanced to finish and install. Well, that came really happy in a strange way, like a drug. Mm -hmm. So only for that moment I do miss, that, um, that I think. Mm -hmm. Not because I want to be a good artist or something, just to get the kind of, I think really like a drug. Mm -hmm. Some last moment comes, shh, I'm living kind of feeling. And so this was the, the project in Mexico, and this in a way connects to mm. some of our thinking for mm. Leeds in the context of Yorkshire Sculpture International. Mm -mm. And the opportunity that we are working with Nabucco to be in the gallery for a month making work. So it's some of this process of we aren't shipping over a series of sculptures that are already configured. We're bringing over component parts, and then you're spending time in the yeah. gallery and we're really 
from the from the point of view of the gallery or an institution it's quite challenging um, but really exciting I think and a really important part of uh, Yorkshire Sculpture International that you'll be here making work I think that's something that we're really keen that is yeah. is part of the process part of the history of of making sculpture in Yorkshire um, particularly with the the foundation of uh, the Henry Moore Foundation and Dean Clough and so I know that we haven't really, sp I know we're not going to necessarily go into great detail, but I was thinking about um, the gallery, uh, the gallery becoming a studio and going through yes. that process. Yes, showing everything, that kind of mess as well. So I hope people enjoy it. Yeah, <laughs> I and I think, I think also it's something you're very, quite open to that being part of the process that people can yeah because i i can't see other people when i started so it don't, doesn't matter mm. if open or not it doesn't change i i did before and nothing problem with people yeah. talk to me just like i, I can listen so i will not answer <laughs> and recently you just showed at the um mm. big survey exhibition at the mori museum Ah, do you, do you want to talk? Yeah, do you want to talk about this? Really, I'm, I'm getting tired to talk. Already. Are you all right? Yeah, Very yeah. quickly, do you want to just really? say a bit about the Mori? Okay, yeah, the okay. On the last one, and then there can be an okay. opportunity for questions. <coughs> okay, okay, just go to the Mori Is that okay, Jane? <laughs> just the last, the last slides, which yeah. show the, the process of the yeah, mold. All, all my studio photo. Uh, yeah, I started from here. Because this time, Mori Museum curator had uh, some idea about something and uh, asked me strongly, making drawing and plan. And uh, generally, I don't do it because I started without any idea, open, and uh, playing with material. That's my process. But uh, me too, I was strange. Okay, I tried new things. Okay, sculpture process that I learned, not learned, but you know, someone teach me. So I tried. So I started with this, making model, right, with wire. Uh, this is the, actually, you don't underst understand, not understand. Three meters, three meters, and the two meters, 80, and height is two meters, nearly three meters, huge. And then next one, with the form, I made, you know, more like a model, and the next, so as a sculpture, cut it, put it, cut it, put it, cut it, put it, yeah? And then tra like a traditional kind of process and go there, next, next. And then making mold, mold. because of silicon, I need a mold, a mold. So I'm making mold, next, mold, next, mold. And the take off inside because I need the, uh, uh, Lamin laminate, laminated. The cast, to take away to make the cast. Yeah, ca cast, mm. not cast, yeah, anyway. And take off huge process. And this is put it together like a mold to work so I can go inside. And then next, uh, no, not, this is not different stuff. Next, this is a silicone. You, you cannot see very well, but huge balloon stuff, yeah? And then look at the work. I feel a little bit strange. Okay, for example, in the school, probably, yeah? Silicon is not really, not make shape so much. So people said you should use fiber inside. If you're a sculpture course, you will understand. If you're not, probably, it's big. So if you make fiber, uh, silicon stays, not like that. So I did it. And the shape, next one, a little bit top is not that nice. Mm. Then we create a curator called me in the morning. Nabuko, something happened. Nabuko, something happened with photograph. And the next one, like that. <laughs> Gosh! But wait, shape, I like this better than before, I thought. <laughs> like, kind of. And then I went back to the gallery, and after close the gallery, 11 
10 o'clock, I started to uh, fix it at night, over the night. And the next day, I put it back. And then next morning, the call again. Nobuko! 7 o'clock in the morning. Nobuko! Didn't work! Come over today! Kind of stuff. And, you know, and you fix it at night again. Then decided next one, the work, this. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this, this is how Silicon wanted. I decided, oh yes, I listened. Sorry, I did control to you, did work. So I put it other stuff. And same as always, and I got imagination about it. And uh, I liked this behavior in the exhibition because all the exhibition was 20 artists being fighting each other. So their energy in the work was 200%. It's too much, too much, too much. Too much works in the space, each space. Only this work, the end, just this is the, sh the end of the show. <laughs> so more, more like a visible <coughs> and uh, fortunately, unfortunately, with H and H, no, uh, is internet, mm. social network yep. became famous. No, because work is problem kind of stuff. So, got the end. I got huge attention. Thank so you. So fine. <laughs> I think. I mean, I, I think that's really interesting in terms of what you, the way that you talk about materials and the way that yes, you talk about your process. It's completely wrong that I did try to control with strange desire, which I've never done before, or not communication with material. Just mm. do it. This is not my way. So this yeah. is my work. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nabuko. I think um, I've, I laughed strange, myself. Yeah, you know, we, to make balloon, I took three three months every day, only three days off every day, and then back with the last train every day with a system. I've never made mistake. <laughs> And I think on that note, we can think about the possibilities of what you're going to be making for Yorkshire Sculpture International. So, answer is, I don't know. No, nope. don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I know it'll be interesting. And um, oh, you can all join us over the course of the month when the book will be here, yeah, yeah. seeing the show come together. And it opens on yeah. Friday the 22nd. Mm -hmm. And I just want to thank you for speaking. It's really <laughs> wonderful that you, sp that you um, spoke and shared this journey through your work from early yeah, days at Goldsmith to your from your childhood all the way to the, your latest work at the Mori yeah, thank you Museum. Very much for you and uh, it was okay and, for and I for. think there's an opportunity we do have time we started late but I think there is an opportunity for questions yeah yeah if you're, for, I think student. you're, for, for students if you're, for everyone yeah. no to ask you don't have questions to, you don't and have a question <laughs> any questions no scientific place mm -hmm. and it does remind me a little of Mary Shelley and Frankenstein and this kind of yes. creation of I love that story yes, is, yes. Is that, yeah. I really love the story of uh, Frankenstein yes I like this kind of stuff very much mm -hmm. yeah and uh, because I don't know because I really like I can yeah Frankenstein this type of stuff makes me go really easily go to the world. So I love the stuff. And also, I really like science, real science. Uh, I actually, I've read quite a lot of science book. Of course, Hawking's is my, my love. Stephen Hawking. <laughs> yes, yeah. of course, of course, the most cool person in the world. Yeah, I've read the his, his, um, short, so short history of time, brief of history of time. Of course, mm. of course, of course. In English, oh, good. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just wonder if there's a, a kind of a relationship between the way that you play with materials <coughs> as a human being. Yeah. Uh, but you may be questioning what's happening now with um, 
synthetic life or artificial intelligence because uh, Frankenstein, in a sense, is very much uh, a contemporary subject. Mm -mm. Uh, how can I answer? Oh, no, what is that? Sorry, English product. Uh, yeah, I mean, talking about computer stuff nowadays, AI or something. No. Um, I'm just, I'm just talking, uh, say, maybe about artificial intelligence and robots and the way that um, mm. in science now they can literally mm. grow flesh in a, a laboratory. Yeah. And so um, that position about what yeah. may be yeah, human but or the future mm, of the human but, uh, is a very important But uh, what I'm doing is kind of opposite of uh, a AI or stuff, computer stuff. Yeah. Because, because it's very, you, because there are digital components in your work though. Yeah, digital stuff, but uh, I tried, always I tried use all, all of, not only sense or feeling, more anything that, that inside. Try to use everything, of course, physically muscle, but like a sense of noise, which is, to do is quite human, right? Mm. Noise, you know, when I use the paper, right? This noise is important to, oh, quite stimulate inside myself in some part, and then react something. This, this uh, continue, continue those stuff with materials which is quite, I don't know for the few long term future, but quite opposite of computer digital things that I believe. That, co that connection to the, to the material, but also the kind of sensory. Yeah, that? and uh, we have uh, automatic reaction and mm. also conscious reaction, everything. And quite, I mean, try to be um, sharp about those stuff that I have inside, try to out. And then what I want, I really want through my work is people also enjoying that stuff through my work. So my work should not say something. And my work should, I want, that I want, that my work should just touch you with your anything, kind of how you are. I'm, I'm, be honest, I'm trying that stuff. And I want to more establish about that part. Yes. Mm. Thank you, Howard. Other questions? You. <laughs> Do you have any ideas what your next um, big exhibition um, work might be about or um, anything like that? So. So the answer is don't know. Don't know. <laughs> don't know. But um, we'll come naturally with during the period of playing. I started already playing with mess. My studio is go back. If I go back in Japan, that kind of stuff. And then comes gradually comes up, comes up some idea, and uh, I leave it the idea continue play and then come up fragments 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 when I put it together that's the idea they were always this one it's close from just the beginning of opening you know start opening so maybe when I pack to send here maybe I get some idea mm. but not perfectly kind of Mm. Well, sorry, I, I will. I, don't worry. I I'm will not decide. worried. I'm not worried. <laughs> because the, the registrars are worried. The registrar asked me <laughs> when, 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 and uh, sometimes angry with me. <laughs> no, no, when, I when. think it's really exciting to be working with you like this. So, no. Lizzie. Um, Nubuka, I wondered if you could describe your studio a little bit more in terms of um, is it a space that's absolutely jammed all the way through? year with objects, does it become fuller when you're having a moment preparing for an exhibition? Is it occupied by people? Do you have assistants? Um, 
so, yes. Or is it just you and the objects? Ah, uh, ah, uh, yes. Sometimes I ask my, uh, my uh, assistant, because when it's big, I need a, another hand. And sometimes, some, some exhibition, actually, I ask a lot of students and ask them how, how you want. So I can see each person as a material. So because people have a different kind of uh, personality, right? They react differently. And sometimes completely different from what I think. So once I did, and did success very well, make it more wider, the work become wider. Because uh, when I do myself all the time, reaction is always you know, sometimes same too much. I have a limit myself. So some, when I feel limit, I ask someone, and easy, you know, yeah, put this one to this wire how you want. And then after that, I control. But uh, this way, it's quite nice to ask. Yeah, some, some, sometimes I ask people to do how they want. Mm. And you do have the video that we that you uh, that is on YouTube of mixing silicone. That's boring. I know it's boring. Yeah, but do you want to I show? Love it. You no, can no, no, we don't have to show. Everyone yeah. can watch it in their own time. If you Google, yeah. if you Google on YouTube. <laughs> But also, that's very much an instructional video for you yeah, yeah. to communicate to your assistants or technical team to mix how you want yeah. things mixed or how you yeah, want things yeah. done. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And we hope. We're, I mean, yeah. obviously. We're but uh, when I ask uh, assistant, it's two way. One is who knows how to do it. A techni technician. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. No assistant, technician. Mm. And the other one is uh, assistant. When I ask assistant, I don't describe so much. Mm. I ask them how they want. And then use them as a um, new material. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. James, I'm just wondering what, from your works that you've done so far, what's your favorite? And what do you feel like for you resonates a book in your work? Like, what's your favorite? Uh, my favorite one. Okay, just go. <laughs> but my favorite is changeable. It's strange, right? And uh, last, the end of the last year, uh, my girl <coughs> opened in the box because he bought back my work, early period of my work. And I was thinking at the time, it's kind of student work. You know? But when you open it, I laughed myself. It's really primitive but really charming that I can't make anymore. This is 20 years ago, right? So I thought, oh, really good work. This is fast time. So that my favorite is cha really changeable. But by now, right? OK, go, go. This, those, those stuff is a big project, which I made space itself, an organized space. And the project is a really strange project that um, a uh, big art event that part of the uh, uh, kind of hotel, no hotel, that uh, they give us, you can have a one, one part of the hotel how you want. So I got a <coughs> shower room. So rebuild it inside in the shower room. So you have to go in there, private place. So take off, uh, go to the place, and uh, there is a little uh, lighting work. We are living in the time machine. Look at that. And after that, also long corridor. Uh, you have to take off the clothes and go inside. And uh, there is uh, one room with uh, this pink stuff. And uh, pink stuff. And here is a wool stuff on the top. Top for, for, for stuff. And they go, it's quite strong reaction I got because you're naked. So you have the whole oh, like a whole, whole feeling. You don't protect anything, right? right? In front of my work. So some people react, so much your work is erotic. I said, mm. really? <laughs> 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 you are, I thought. Right? <laughs> and some, uh, some artists said, wow, your work is, looks like living everything, mm. right? So people react completely different. And I thought really success.
just how they are. Nothing to do with me. Yeah, One at the back. Um, you said you like people to bring, you don't like putting meaning into your work. Uh, you like people to sort of bring their own meaning to a piece. Mm -hmm. And that, that last one with the balloon that sort of deflated over time, mm -hmm. how it kind of had its own identity as it changed mm -hmm. over time. Do you think that that sort of changed anything? Did that mean anything to you that it changed over time? The last one is just happened. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, wow, the the figure change, physically change or not change. I don't particularly concentrate on that. Yeah. Um, that was just uh, no accident, no no accident, not on purpose, but no. Not so much concentrate on that. I'm relaxed about it. Open and it's both okay, kind of. Thank you, Nabuko. You've talked Is it okay? a lot. Is that okay? Is that yeah. Thank you very much. Um, I'd just like to, on behalf of, of everyone here today, um, Nabako and Sarah, thank you so much. That was a fantastic conversation, incredibly engaging. And I think, I'm sure I speak for all of us when I say we're really, really excited and, and thrilled to, to see what's going to happen in Leeds. And the fact that there's so much uncertainty about it now just makes it all the more exciting. And um, so we look forward to having you in the city for a, a good period of time. Of course, uh, please do. So, thank you very much for everyone. And please, please, please come to see my work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I feel very confident in <laughs> yeah. saying that everyone in this yeah. room will be coming to see yeah, your work. Yeah, that's I'm why sure. I came here. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and um, I also need to uh, uh, remind and invite everyone back here next week when we will have the pleasure of presenting Aisha Erkman, who will be coming to talk to us about her work and her contribution to Yorkshire Sculpture International. And Jane, have you got any, any other house notes to... People fill in the surveys. Oh, that would be fantastic if you can. Um, I, just, I would also just like to thank Leeds Beckett and Yorkshire Sculpture International for really putting together this series of talks, which I know that you're the penultimate and then Aisha, but it's been an incredible opportunity to hear artists before you see their work, as often is not the case. Often it's always the other way round, that you you see the show and then you hear from the artist. So I think to have that incredible opportunity um, to hear from you and to hear from all the artists has been great. Thank you. Yeah. So one, one last thank you for our speakers. Thank you all.